The purpose of this video is to review over the procedure for heat fixing bacteria slides. Now heat fixing this slide accomplishes three things. First, it kills the bacteria. Secondly, it firmly attaches the smear to the microscope slide. And then finally, it allows the sample to more readily take up the stain once the bacteria slide is ready for staining. The first step in heat fixing a bacteria slide is to get a clean microscope slide. Now we will use a wax pencil and we will draw a circle uh, on the microscope slide to separate each of the types of bacteria that is going to be sampled. In this case we have three circles, so three different types of bacteria. If only a uh, a simple stain is going to occur in only one bacteria, then you would only need one circle. Before we begin working with our live bacteria, we want to take our flame loop and we want to hold it over a flame source, a heat source, and we want to sterilize the uh, flame loop. And we want to hold it until we have a nice red color to indicate that the loop has gotten hot enough to uh, destroy any kind of bacteria and so now our loop is sterilized. The exact procedure uh, for heat fixing a bacteria depends upon whether the bacteria is coming from a colony, from a uh, petri dish or uh, an auger slant, or is the bacteria coming from a liquid um, broth type situation such as we see in these test tubes. Now we will begin with the procedure dealing with bacteria from colonies either collected from a petri dish or an auger slant. So the first thing we want to do when we have our bacteria from a petri dish or an auger slant is using our loop we want to transfer a small drop of water to the center of the slide and we want to be careful to be uh, close to but not overlapping the grease pencil mark and we don't want to transfer too much water because the drop will have a difficulty air drying we then want to sterilize our loop and we want to touch the single colony and transfer that to uh, the bacteria in the water drop so here we are touching our single bacteria colony and we're going to transfer this to our water drop on our slide and we want to mix it up well. Now doing this we're taking that thick amount of lots of bacteria and we're diluting it down with the water. So here we are mixing up that uh, bacteria colony with the water. And then the next important thing that we need to do is we want to make sure and let this water drop with the bacteria mixed with it air dry. And so we have to be patient and let it air dry before we move on to our next step. While we're waiting for the slide to air dry, we take our flame loop and again we want to sterilize our flame loop and kill off any bacteria that is still remaining on the flame loop from our uh, petri dish colony. We want to do that by maintaining the uh, flame loop in the, the heat source until the loop is nice and red and then allow it to cool before we set our flame loop down. Now, if we are doing a procedure where we're working with uh, a bacteria colony that is in a, a nutrient broth, one of the things we want to be aware of is that our bacteria can settle towards the bottom of our test tube. And we want to make sure that we get enough of our bacteria source and place that on our slide. So we want to thump the test tube several times thumping this so that we can get this moving in a swirling motion and get this bacteria that's down here to mix up all the way through the uh, solution. Now we do not want to inverse this uh, because if we, we um, inverse our test tube we could spill our fluid out and contaminate ourselves. We also do not want to thump the test tube so hard that we splatter solution outside. But we do want to thump it enough that we get a swirling motion inside here so that we can evenly distribute the bacteria throughout the, uh, the broth. Once we have done so, we can use our uh, sterilized flame loop 
and we want to transfer one to two drops of the bacteria to the center of a clean glass slide. We want to be close to, but we do not want to overlap that grease pencil mark. So here we are transferring a dropful of that um, nutrient broth with the bacteria to our bacteria slide. Now, after we have done this, again, it is very important that we allow our bacteria smear to air dry. We cannot simply heat the, the uh, sample up or blow on it. Uh, we have to be patient and allow the bacteria to dry so that we minimize contamination and also that we minimize any kind of infection to ourselves. Now that our uh, bacteria has air dried, it's time to heat fix the bacteria. And we're going to do this by holding the slide either with a, um, some kind of tongs. Uh, I tend to use clothes pins and hold them at the tip end. Now if we have a bacteria incinerator, we can have a special connection where we set our uh, bacteria slides on that slide rest there and we can heat fix it or we can hold it over the opening section of that incinerator. If we do not have that we can use a Bunsen burner. If our procedure uh, requires using a Bunsen burner to heat fix the bacteria we're going to hold the uh, slide by one edge and we're going to pass it slowly through the Bunsen burner once, twice, and then we're not going to move it too slowly so that we become uncomfortable, uh, the heat starts to hurt our hand. We also do not want to overheat the slide where we cause the slide to crack or break. And once we've done this, then we have denatured the bacteria protein, in essence killing the bacteria and sticking it to the slide. Now the bacteria is safe for us to follow the steps for staining for whichever type of stain we choose to use. And you can look at our various types of staining techniques on my gram stain video or my simple staining videos. And so finally, here we have our bacteria smears that have been heat fixed. Uh, we can see that they are present within the uh, wax circles and they are ready to be stained.